Hello everyone, welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for your Monday, February 17th, 2020. Please keep in mind that time is an illusion and energies are fluid. So just because this is a reading that is dated for the 17th of February, that does not mean that it absolutely has to resonate for you at that time. Whenever you are guided to watch this reading and it resonates for you, then that is the message for you in that moment. Also keep in mind that this is a general reading so this is not going to resonate for everyone nor will the whole thing necessarily resonate for you it's possible that it may resonate for you but like the whole thing but I mean it's probably not that likely <laughs> just saying um, um, but whatever take it as it resonates and if it does all resonate for you then excellent and this is definitely the resonating the reading for you but if there are just certain parts that resonate then take what it Take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Yeah. So I hope everyone had a good weekend. Um, we are officially in a new round of Mercury being retrograde. Um, that started on the 16th or as of the day of this, as of this is, as the moment of this is being recorded. Um, that was yesterday. And it goes until March 9th, I believe. Something like that. Um, and you know the big a big thing a big theme that i keep hearing for this current retrograde is karmic retribution now the thing about that is um uh this retrograde people are saying that the that it's it, it's it's mercury is retrograding through pisces I'm not exactly sure um, what sign the retrograde is actually happening in. If it's start if if like Mercury is actually in Pisces right now and is moving backwards, or if it like started out. Oh, okay, well, I guess it would be. But th the thing that I'm that that's that's coming to mind for me is the fact that um, the Sun is still in Aquarius, at least in. Western astrology, it's towards the end of Aquarius right now. Um, we're going to be moving into Pisces season fairly soon. Uh, I want to say around somewhere around the 22nd of February or something like that. Um, please forgive me, you guys. I'm not, I'm not an astrologer. But intuitively, what I'm picking up on here is because we are technically in Aquarius season, and Aquarius season is, um, and is a time of uh karmic payback karmic release karmic retribution things coming back to you um you know that which you've put out coming back to you in kind so things like that and with mercury being in retrograde this could be I, I just get a very strong sense that this retrograde retrograde season is going to or not season but this mercury retrograde period is going to be a moment where a lot of things could be resurfacing and that's natural for a re for, for a mercury being in retrograde however with this one I, f I just feel a very strong sense for the collective that there could be a lot coming back in order to tie up loose ends is what spirit just said um, uh, unfinished business um, and there also could be a moment of second chances so if there's something that you have been wanting to revamp you've been wanting to try again you've been wanting to clear the air um, start over with something or someone this very well could be a period in which you could do that because the energies of mercury going in retrograde could really or being in retrograde could really facilitate uh, i'm just getting a very strong sense that this could really facilitate any sort of um, meetings agreements uh, conversations and things that you would need to have in order to set the record straight start over get a second chance push the reset button whatever you want to say there now normally people are like oh you don't want to have big conversations and you want to you know you people go, go crazy during the retrograde and and you can't speak correctly and blah 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 and it it, it really just takes it, it, it's really not all that bad it's really not always all that bad um, it just takes a stronger sense of mindfulness it just takes a little more understanding it takes a little more care a little more caution being a little more sen a conscience conscious of the words that you use and what you do engage in spirit is saying very strongly um, it's a very it's a very much an example or an energy of pick your battles wisely um, 
yes, there could be misunderstandings, but if you stay conscious, if you stay present in the moment, if you stay aware of what's going on and be in a place of responding rather than reacting, your chances of things going better, going more in your favor, clearing up easier, you, your chances of having a little bit of an easier time with the situation are higher. Okay, so just think of it that way. Mercury being in retrograde is not always a bad thing. It actually could very well be a good thing. Like, so for those of you that kind of dread, like we'll say, an ex coming back into your life. Well, if that ex is trying to come back and you're like well aware or fully aware that you don't want to deal with them again, wouldn't this be the perfect time to just lay down the law and be like, look, we're done. I mean, you don't have to be rude about it, but you can be like, look, you know what? Thanks for the offer, blah, 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 whatnot, whatever, but this is over. It's over. Okay? Does it, I mean, it doesn't have to be all that bad. You know what I mean? All right. I'm going to, but then that takes us to our, excuse me, that t this takes us to our pre-shuffle energy because we do have justice here, but justice has come out on the, the, the not so good side, okay? And I'm hearing with this card, I'm hearing karmic retribution. We also have the four of swords as an overall energy, and then we still have the devil lurking, okay? Now, what I'm getting with this energy here is that you're not, so if this is you, that's kind of like, I want to say in this four of swords state where you're kind of resting or contemplating, um, I feel like you're sandwiched in between the, some sort of injustice that has been created and, or, or has happened and, um, the devil here, but the devil's back is turned. So like what I feel like is with the devil being devil's back being turned, it's like the devil doesn't really have this influence over you that it had in the past. And it's very interesting that this is this devil is still coming out. Because we were talking about the devil all last week. Okay. So it seems that some of you are still dealing with this, but what I'm feeling is that you're at the tail end of it is what I want to say because at this point with this four of swords energy four of swords representing meditation rest recuperation maybe even relaxation may not feel like relaxation because you have so much heaviness on your mind but um, you may be trying to relax as much as you can so that you can process whatever it is but I really do feel like you're facing this injustice whatever this was now it could be twofold it could be the injustice was developed or facilitated by the devil um uh, the devil being toxicity codependency addiction narcissism toxic friends toxic toxic environment i am to be quite honest i am getting a bit of um some sort of external influence maybe third party energy with um feeling through this devil here uh, but but i'm feeling like friends colleagues associates um people that someone would people that someone would um, surround themselves with. That's kind of an energy that I'm picking up on. And there has been some injustice here. Like, I just feel an energy of, like, things running rampant and just getting wildly out of control. And this person, whether this is you or someone else that you're connected to here, um, this person that's in this four of swords energy is in just a bit of a contemplative mode just like looking back on it and seeing how things just went absolutely nuts and kind of feeling remorseful about it um but in your remorse what i'm feeling here is in your remorse is like i really do feel like you're trying to figure out a way to make things better to heal the situation interesting yeah okay and it really could very if, very well could be mercury going in retrograde that's bringing this could this could be bringing something up for you that happened a long long time ago and maybe you're just now processing it you know what I mean? Now you're just you're just now in an energy or a mindset even where you can look back on this thing and really 
learn some deeper lessons, gain some deeper understanding. Yeah, oh my god, look at that. The hanged man just fell out. Change in perspective here, guys. Knight of Wands and the Four of Wands. Yeah, okay, so you're definitely in an energy. This really could be something from the past, maybe something from the distant past, 10, 20 years ago or something like that. It could be a relationship. Maybe you're starting to understand why you had a certain relationship with someone, why a certain relationship played out the way that it did with someone. It doesn't have to be from the distant past. It could be from, you know, pretty recent past. Um, but with the Four of Wands here, you have the ability or you have the foundation that you need to, to see this differently now. Okay? Knight of Wands, this is an activation. This is inspired by... I'm hearing heavenly forces. Yeah. That's really great. It may be uncomfortable. It really may feel very uncomfortable for you right now, but ultimately... <laughs> Good lord. Oh my god. Four of wands, the hermit, and the queen of pentacles. Five of pentacles, page of pentacles. I mean... Oh. Counterparts. Counterparts. Okay. Um... Now the Four of Wands is giving me a little bit of a union card. Uh, I'm sorry, a union energy. Um, but someone here has definitely learned their worth. This could be a feminine counterpart with the Queen of Pentacles, or this really could be the rise of the feminine within your own self. So this is probably, if that's the case, this is someone that's probably mainly uh, or, or um, dominantly masculine in their energetic expression. It doesn't have to be, though, because you could be dominantly feminine in your energetic expression, but now you're really learning to love yourself and love your feminine side and embrace your feminine side for everything that it truly is and everything that it stands for regardless of what other people have to say about it which would then lead you to a point where you can start to integrate your masculine side but either way someone here really has gained some really solid foundation has gone within and figured out some things about themselves or understands themselves in a much better way than they did before which is allowing them to sit in this Queen of Pentacles energy of knowing their worth, turning their backs on anything that does not serve their highest good, does not serve the highest good of the of the others involved, and is um, does not honor, you know, what she's worthy of, what he or she knows she's worthy of, or he or she knows that they're worthy of. Five of Pentacles, Page of Pentacles. This, this feels like a. Uh, this really does feel like a fresh start. Where maybe you were in this Five of Pentacles, this self doubt, this lack of abundance, um, whatnot, whatever. But now you have a new day, a new dawn arising with the Page of Pentacles and the Queen of Pentacles here coming into your self worth and understanding yourself much better, understanding the worth of others as well, which is directly related to the understanding of your own inner worth. Very nice. Very, very nice, guys. Okay, well, to be honest, this sounds like a good way to start retrograde, Mercury retro being in retrograde. Um, just because of that, today I have decided to go with my No Drama Llama mug, courtesy of Sam. Hi, Sam. Thank you very much. <laughs> but... I have a song in my head. Um, it's called Treat You Better by Rufus Du Soul. It's a very good song. But it's a, but the, the one um the one phrase that's standing out the most is there's a moment where in the, the lyrics is they the, the the guy says, Let's start over. And that's kind of what I'm hearing here. I really do feel like someone has really learned their worth and is willing to try things a different way. Maybe then they were more uh, different than they were willing to try them in the past. Which is lovely. A fresh start. That sounds nice. Okay. Let's see what we've got for your Monday. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. 
please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for our Monday, February 17th, 2020. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, kids, three shuffles. Um, something that came to mind while I was praying right then, um, Spirit was saying that we don't really want you guys to be afraid of anything that's happening or this retrograde period because, yeah, okay, we're talking about karmic retribution and all that and things coming up to the surface and, and everything like that. But... It's really just, we really just want, they're encouraging us to look at it in a, in a way that, or from a point of view, it's like, if something does come up, it just needs clearing. Okay, you don't have to freak out about what could be coming back, what could be resurfacing. If something resurfaces, just take it as an opportunity to close it out. Maybe for good, or maybe in a way that's, you know, stronger than it had been closed out before, you know what I mean? There's nothing to fear. There's really no need to worry. Like, don't freak out. The more you freak out about this, the more resistance that you put into it and the more turmoil you literally create for yourself. You know what I mean? Okay. We're gonna, yeah, we're gonna stop there. Oh, look, and of course the devil is right at the top of the deck here. Interesting. Interesting, but at the other, on the other side of the on the bottom of the deck we have temperance, but it's the side of temperance that asks you not to forget. First of all, don't forget what you've learned, with represented by the bird here. But then also, don't forget your sense of self with the lion. With this side of of temperance, this talks about because this is the gallows that the hangs man hangs himself from, right? So here in temperance, it's like don't. Don't give up your sense of self or your sense of, de of identity just to appease others. And then, of course, on the other side of the deck, you have the devil. Okay? So I guess many of us are still facing this de this devil energy, but now I would say that this, this Mercury being in retrograde period would actually really facilitate the abolishment of whatever this devil energy represents for you here like you could you, i mean consider it a final scrub i mean we last week uh not this past weekend but the weekend before that i did morning coffee the weekend edition of morning coffee and the title for that was this feels like a final wash and then by the time we got to this past weekend the 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 storyline of the week ended up with the weekend edition being like this whole week felt like a final wash but it could very well be that maybe you have an extended period over this retrograde see uh this retrograde period up until about march 9th i believe it is where you can really get some final scrubbing in like you can really clean out the, the deep crevices and uh, to be quite honest, why wouldn't you want to take that opportunity? I mean, yes, yeah, sure, there's more work involved and whatever, but 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 think about the benefit of really cleaning out those nooks and crannies, right? Mm. Mm, that's pretty cool, guys. That sounds like a it, honestly, this feels like a very unique and strong opportunity. And if anyone is really inclined to take it, I would say go ahead and take it, honey. All right. Okay, let's see. So, Monday, February 17th. What else do you want to discuss with us today? Please, Spirit. Monday, February 17th. More. All right, we have the Three of Wands so far. Let's get some more. Monday, February 17th. What do you want to discuss with us today, Spirit? Mmm, the King of Wands. Star. Oh, but then there's that Nine of Swords. Alright, I'm gonna give this one more shuffle, and then we'll see what, what, so then we'll talk about this, yeah? One last shuffle here. Oh, the Ten of Wands. Alright. And then we have the Hermit, with the Knight of Swords, at the bottom of the deck. Um, all right. All this worry, all this fear, all this anxiety. I really hope.
hope I really the, the main thing that I want to say here for you guys is and I don't often say this because this Knight of Swords energy can be really dangerous, okay? Um, but I really want to encourage whomever is feeling burdened and afraid to really use this Knight of Swords energy to your advantage to cut away all of this or as much of this as you can. The light of your own soul. The Hermit. Whoa. <laughs> okay. Oh my god. Okay. The light of your own soul is what's going to illuminate the path for you. That's what I'm hearing. It is, it is illuminating the path for you. And thus, that's why you have this Knight of Swords energies right here. Now, the Knight of Swords fell out with another card. It has revealed the Page of Pentacles at the bottom of the deck. And then underneath the Knight of Swords is the King of Cups. All right, so we have the King of Wands and we have the King of Cups. And both of them are facing you, facing us. Okay? So originally what I wanted to say was the light of your own soul is shining forward, is lighting the way, is illuminating the, the, the way for you, is illuminating the path for you. This Knight of Swords energy is what you need to clear away any of the brush, the vines, um, defend yourself from anything that may want to stop you, may want to block you from your path. The King of Wands energy is you being confident, firm, secure, knowing what it is that you want and not being afraid to move forward towards it. You then have that tempered now with the King of Cups energy. The truth of your heart. What it is you truly desire on a heart, on, on your, on, in your heart. Okay. And then with that, you have the Three of Wands here. So it's like there's an energy of waiting for some return on an investment. Okay, I understand that. But also what the Three of Wands is saying is you are, in fact, on the right path. And I'm getting a strong sense that you're doing the work that is necessary. You've been doing the work that is necessary. Therefore, there's no need to fret. There's no need to, to be afraid. There's no need to wonder. There's no need to, to carry a bunch of what ifs. With this ten of wands here it's like you're you it, for some of you this actually does feel like you are carrying the burdens of other things and calling them backup plans well just in case this one thing that i know i want and desire and have been working towards doesn't come through i'm going to carry all these other things too you know just in case but why would you do that because you're expending so much other energy on stuff that isn't really truly what you want. So why not put all your time, your effort, your energy, your resources, or at least the majority of them into what it is you truly want? Obviously, you're going to have to spread your resources between some other things so that you can, you know, keep your life going. Okay, but that's not what I'm picking up on with this Ten of Wands. This is like having backup plans. Plan B... C and uh, yeah, B, C, and D, just because on the off chance, or just because of the fact that there's some sort of possibility that plan A won't work. And okay, that's fine. I guess you can have, you know, ideas for what you want as your backup plan. But what I really want to say is, I want, I would rather that you focus your the, the bulk of your time and your energy and your effort into plan A, we'll call it. And even if plan A doesn't turn out the way you want it to, that doesn't mean that it's not going to, to work. So which is even another reason, like, okay, let's say, let's say plan A is um, a specific job with a specific company. And you have been applying or working towards building your resume, building your skill set so that you can get this specific job at this specific company. But unfortunately, you don't get that specific job at a specific company, but you do get a same a similar job that is in that same field or within that same skill set at a different company. Working somewhere that actually in hindsight is way better for you, way better of a fit than the other spot. We'll put that into relationships. What if plan A is a relationship with a specific person? 
But unfortunately, that relationship doesn't manifest with that specific person. But the person that it does manifest with is the exact ideal right person and can still be considered plan A. Why? Because it still has all of the other elements that you've desired, that you've been cultivating, that you've been building momentum towards or working towards three of wands. It's just with a person that's actually a much better fit than the one that you thought was going to fit that place in the begin with. That's what we're saying here. Okay. Interesting. Keep your mind open. That's what I'm getting with this. Queen, with not, well, interesting. I was going to say that's what I was getting with this Queen of Swords, but I was actually pointing to the Knight of Swords. That's very interesting that I said the Queen of Swords instead of the Knight of Swords. Um, okay. Anyway, um, the Queen of Swords could probably help you a great deal here. But actually, it's the Knight of Swords that came out. But the, but the Knight of Swords is very much in, is like the, is the, 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 the bodyguard. Interesting. Some of you need need really need the discernment of the Queen of Swords right now. And then let the Knight of Swords follow through with whatever the Queen of Swords has to say. Very interesting, you guys. And now we do have two kings here, but that could be speaking to masculine energy, but um, what I'm really reading this as is the action that masculine energy is oriented towards. I'm also getting a sense of honor, truth, integrity, leadership. I'm hearing standing your ground, standing on your own two feet, doing what it is is right for you. Being the master of your own domain, taking your own, like holding your own power, holding your own strength, not allowing anyone to sway you from your path. So that's also the fixed energy of this king the, these kings here masculine energy is fixed in nature where feminine whereas feminine energy is cardinal or um cardinal in nature which we can call them trailblazers okay all right i want to get into clarification now we're going to start with the kings here. So the king of cups, the king of wands, and the knight of swords. I want to get some clarification on this for you. Just a deeper understanding of this for you right now. Alright, last shuffle here. Okay. So let's see, what is this? Knight of Swords, King of Cups, King of Wands. Two of Wands with something else underneath, okay. The Hanged Man, but the Hanged Man is in reverse. That's very interesting. Knight of Wands now. All right, so it, ooh, goodness gracious. <laughs> Overall energy is the sun. Okay, so this is good. This is illumination. This is happiness. This is joy. This is contentment. Um, especially with the the hanged man, which is in reverse, which is interesting because this is been, this was this was in the deck reversed, um, and and I and I don't necessarily. I keep I try to keep my cards upright. Okay, so, um, but. This came out like this this way for a reason, and it makes perfect sense. With the hang, with the hanged man in reverse, there's an end of some sort of stagnancy, an end of some sort of confusion, an end of um, procrastination, is what I'm getting. It, there's also an energy of like wanting to play the field, wanting to keep your options open. Oh wait, hold on, because now I'm seeing the other side of this. Oh. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Let me look at all of this before I, before I 
open my mouth anymore. Yikes. Oh, shit, y'all. Alright, well, someone is stuck. I will say that. I will say that. For some of you, someone is stuck and is caught in this confusion, or maybe you've been in this confusion. Um, it, I am getting a small twinge for some of you that this is a bit of a stubborn energy. You haven't wanted to make a change. But for others of you, you've been struggling to see this change in perspective. But then in the rest of the cards that we have here, we have death, the tower, the seven of swords, five of cups, five of wands, judgment, eight of wands. Also, knight of wands. So it feels like there's an activation here. It feels like there is going to be a sudden clearing, a sudden understanding, maybe and, and even communication coming. Okay. I am seeing two individuals here, one feminine and then probably masculine over on this side. So this could be a masculine counterpart or this could be something that you're dealing with with your own internal masculine energies. But on the masculine side, and this definitely could be internally, you know, especially if you're working on balancing and integrating your inner masculine energies, there could be a, there, there could be an uproar. There really could be an upheaval right now, or maybe you've been in an extended period of an upheaval, a transformation, um, uh, and a sudden change. We have death and the tower. With that is the seven of swords, though. So I'm getting an energy of you. You may not have really been letting anyone in on this. This may have you. Um, I just heard suffering in silence. Okay, Five of Cups, Five of Wands. This, the masculine energies have been in this Five of Cups energy for some time now. Okay, for really, for really for some time now. And what I'm getting with this, the Five of Wands here, it's like there's been a little bit of an inner struggle, an, an ego battle maybe, um, or just like a, 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 an inner dialogue of, well, certain things happen and I don't feel like I should be ashamed of that. But at the same time, I just as, so, as soon as I heard, I said that, I heard, well, yes, you do. Um, you know, there's something, there were some elements to it that you need to fess up about with and like be honest with yourself about it and it's just this inter it's this egoic back and forth but where finally judgment comes through or spirit comes through it's like all right look enough no more of this all right we're going to we're, we're going to call you up to a higher center we're going to clear the air we're going to help you resurrect yourself we're going to help you clear we're going to help you clear all this out all right there's an activation here with the knight of wands but there is a little bit of an ultimatum here it's like you either have to follow through with this activation and change or you're just going to recreate the cycle but i don't really see that happening because with this uh, the recreation of the cycle here because you have the knight of wands and you have the eight of wands and i just feel like with the sun also i feel like there's enough illumination here on this side of the table that's going to allow you to go through this transformation um go through this sudden change you may have already done this okay this could be a past energy that's like coming to fruition right now or is culminating right now in some sort of movement in a new direction or maybe even some sort of communication with this eight of wands energy travel of some sort but this could be something that's has happened really quickly or may happen really quickly may happen suddenly out of the blue especially with this tower energy okay and then on the other side we have the queen of pentacles the two of wands the hanged man in reverse and the seven of cups so this could be speaking to your inner feminine side here and if we're talking about your internal energies your inner masculine and in your inner feminine your inner masculine is really going through a change an upheaval <coughs> your inner feminine is kind of just sitting in her stability her queen of pentacles state holding down the fort while the masculine kind of reshapes himself there is a bit of a change there is a direction there's a there's a, a choice that needs to be made here with the two of wands however this choice is not able to be made yet seven of cups with the hanged man in reverse the hanged man in reverse representing there needs to be some sort of change in perspective or enlightenment that can happen before this choice is made here with the two of wands and 
And you, we, we can't make this choice yet because things are too up in the air. Seven of Cups. But that's because this masculine side here is going through, I keep hearing, an upheaval. Now, this could also translate into the external world where we have divine counterparts. The masculine is going through this upheaval or has been going through this upheaval. And thus, it's put the feminine here in this Queen of Pentacles energy in a little bit of a precarious position. Because she's been she's holding down the fort here. She's in her Queen of Pentacles energy. She's the ride or die. She's the wifey. She's the partner in crime, the, Cl the Bonnie to the Clyde. Um... And yet, there, what I just heard is there isn't much that she can do other than be nurturing and hold down the fort, but also hold her own worth. And now, especially for those of you that are in separation here, the feminine, you have really been doing this, but you've been keeping your options open in terms of a partner, the king to your queen, because your true masculine or your true counterpart, like the... The one I'm hearing, the one that you're destined to be with, or the one that you're desiring to be with the most, blah, 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 whatnot, whatever. He or she are go is going through a, a, a change, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to end up with you, or at least you know you're aware of that. And so, yes, you're holding down the fort. You're being that stable, that grounded individual. You are, you're abundant. You know your worth. You're, you, you know, even financially stable. And you're holding the energy of being the counterpart, but you just don't know how it's going to happen. Seven of Cups, the Hanged Man is in reverse. The Two of Wands is... So you might actually feel like you're being held back. But that would be the universe. Spirit just said, that would be the universe holding you back, not this counterpart. Because the universe is waiting for the right time and the right person and the right circumstance and the right situation to line you guys up with. And... Especially if you're a feminine counterpart here, regardless of who your, your real, true, honest-to-God masculine is, the whole masculine collective is going through this change, this upheaval. I mean, watch any, any Twin Flame or Divine Counterpart, whatever readings, if you're into that thing, and just, and just listen to the theme lately, you know? So, okay. But then you do have the sun at the bottom of the deck here. That all is turning out well. Illumination is happening. Happiness, joy, contentment. Everything working out exactly as planned, exactly as necessary. Maybe even having a much better outcome than you expected. Okay. Okay, um, cool, so what I want to do now, I want to look at the Nine of Swords, the Ten of Wands, and the Three of Wands, but I'm going to use the Golden Universal Tarot for that, because for this energy here, I just want to get advice from Spirit on how to deal with, you know, being on your path here with the Three of Wands, all right, and doing the damn thing, but still feeling like you need, you're, you're carrying some sort of burdens, but you're carrying these burdens out of fear. Maybe lack of faith, I want to call that. So because of that, we're going to use, we're going to get some guidance here for you from the Golden Universal Tarot, straight from Spirit. Instead of just looking deeper into the energy, let's get... Some words of advice, yes. <laughs> There's the Nine of Swords again. Um, already what Spirit wants to say is you really need to leave the details up to us. So whatever you can do to really calm your fears as much as you possibly can, please do so because they're only getting in the way. And it's not even like... It's that much of a hindrance. It's just probably either delaying things for you ever so slightly, just a little bit, even though there is such a thing as divine timing anyway, or it's just creating more turmoil for you than is necessary. That's the main thing. One more shuffle. All right, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Some advice for this. Nine of Swords, Ten of Wands, Three of Wands, Queen of Cups. 
Let me get a little bit more here. But this Queen of Cups is talking about knowing your emotions, holding your emotions, staying firm, staying balanced, stay emotionally balanced, emotionally secure. Do not hide from your emotions. If you're feeling through something, that's fine. Feel through it, but work it, work it out. Recognize that it's just a fear. Recognize that it's just a worry. If it is something of true concern that you need to maybe do something about or handle, then by all means, handle it. But, but take your time to understand that a lot of the things that are coming up right now are illusionary. Okay? It's imagined. Underneath the deck at the moment is the Nine of Cups. Satisfaction is coming. I kind of want to leave it there. Also, make sure to t make sure to do your self care with this Queen of Cups energy. Like that is very very important. Nine of Cups. I mean, satisfaction is coming. And actually, what I'm getting with the Nine of Cups, what Spirit is kind of saying here, is focus on the little things. Focus on the things that make you happy or bring you joy in this moment. Be in the moment. Don't look off to the future so much. Be in the moment. Oh, we have... Oh, that's true. We do have the counterparts on the table between the King and the Queen of Cups. Oh, yay. That's cute. <laughs> I mean, it, the... the Okay, so we could be talking about we could be talking to the feminine counterpart here. And if you are dealing with a counterpart situation, you are aligning with a soulmate. Feminine it is it is very important. It is very very important that you hold your own. You hold your um your emotions well intact. It is also very important um whether you're the masculine or the feminine in this because both of us have both energies and both of us have intuitive empathic abilities okay so it is very important for you to understand whose energy is whose um are you picking up on someone else's energy are you picking up on your divine counterparts energy or is this something that is really truly genuinely coming from you that's something to be aware of also i had an experience like that last night where I was feeling all of this energy out of the blue and I really had to start, I had to sit down and be like, okay, where is this coming from? And it wasn't coming from me. So it's like, okay, all right. But then once I understood that, once I understood that, number one, I didn't have to freak out so much about it. But number two, then I could say, okay, I could redirect, redirect my focus and focus on something else and, and blah, blah, blah. And eventually before I knew it, it dissipated. Which was good. Okay. Oracle guidance. But the oracle guidance today is coming from the fairy forest. All right. All right. So what oracle guidance... Do we have for the kids today on our Monday, second day of Mercury being in retrograde, going through changes and upheavals. There it is. Is that it? Is that it? That was it. Oof. Oh boy. Okay. Yikes. This is a pretty, <laughs> a pretty tough one. All right, um, we have card number 21, Blood Month, yikes, Sacrifice, Offerings, Decisions. Mm. Well, there is a time for us all to gather the harvest to us. In order to do so, in the fields, the heads of grain must fall. In our own lives, we must similarly be ready to let go and offer up something of value in order to make room for the greater good that can then flow into our lives, when into our very souls. When we sacrifice, we make something, quote, sacred by the very act of giving it up. 
It is no sacrifice to make an offering that has no value, no meaning to us. And so at this time, you are being asked to give, contribute, and offer up something valuable to you in order to receive in return. What you must give, oh, I'm sorry, what you give must be significant, as there must be energetic room created in order for significant blessings to flow through you in re or flow to you in return. These sacrifices do not always come in the form of the material. It is not always a, quote, thing that we offer or let go of. It can be our pride, our judgment, our human conceits, our petty quarrels and disputes, all of which fill our days with distractions that serve no one. With blood month comes the need to make a deep and earnest decision to give up something that we have held dear, even, com even components of our constructed human personality to give them up to feed the hungry beings of blood month who, although terrifying to gaze upon, will clear and free us in so many ways. Have no doubt, from the offerings you make, the future is born. Now is the time to make that sacred offering. Wow. So there you have it. I mean, that... A little scary. All right, there's another card that's actually wanting to come out here, and it's card number six. And it's a little more balancing. <laughs> it's card number six. It's Athling, Nobility, Grace, and Gratitude. And it's funny because this card fell out while I was picking up the de deck before, but I was like, mm, let me not do it. But then as I was trying to pick up the deck again to, you know, put things away, it fell out again. So we're going to talk about this too, because I feel like this is part of the message here. And actually, this goes straight along with, you know, the sacrifice, the offerings here that Blood Month repre uh, represented. So, Athling, Nobility grace and gratitude heavy is the head who wears the crown but within every moment within all responsibilities and circumstances lies the opportunity to be noble to be graceful to be grateful and this is ethling a wise being who is able to listen to the pleas and the requests and the demands and to respond without pressure or frustration or tension she is able to distill the clamor about her into calm and focus on one simple deed at a time. She is not one to sacrifice herself, nor will she allow herself to be influenced and dominated, nor is she overwhelmed despite the vast nature of her realm and her responsibilities. She wears her duties lightly, just as she does this crown. And this is your message. Find a way to slow down the demands of your life, create boundaries, cease feeling so obligated to sacrifice your needs to the needs of others who are simply noisier and more entitled. For this moment, breathe and still yourself, and then carefully move forward, focusing on one thing at a time, giving each task your absolute attention. Now is the time for you to be as gracious when you say no as when you give your agreement to never be cruel or snap and condemn simply because it would be easier to do so. Atheling reminds us that even when under pressure, with duty and status come great responsibility, and we must remember our blessings in order to develop our own contentment. We must extend patience and endow others with dignity, be kind, and be grateful that we have the opportunities that we have to change the world for the better every day. Beautiful. So there you have it, kids. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that was helpful for you. I hope you guys have a fantastic Monday. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah? Take care. Bye. <laughs>